Files for Cablevision. Uh, Laura McQuaid and Sadly Stevens Burke and Burke. And Cecilia Masterilli. Christine Savarino, both of whom a delight in violating Glendora's public access rights and they have been sued multiple times for that and Cecilia ended up having to pay five thousand dollars in the White Plains City Court. David A. Singer, a lawyer for uh, Patricia and Langelotti, Langelotti and uh, Robert Callagy. Uh, Cablevision's liar for hire, except that he has no Carmody weight proof that they did hire him. So these are going right now uh, to White Plains to be served on these defendants. Glendora cannot serve them because the appellate term is three decades behind the federal courts. Uh, in the federal courts you can just serve them yourself and write an affirmation that you did so. But the appellate term never finds an easy way to do anything. Well, here it is, folks. Appellate term, Supreme Court, 9th and 10th Judicial Districts, Westchester County, State of New York, United States of America, Glendora, Plaintiff Appellant versus Charles F. Dolan, Cablevision Systems Corporation, James L. Dolan, Mac Budil, Thomas Garger, Charles A. Former, Christine Savarino, Cecilia Masterilli, Peggy Anderson, Robin M. Callagy, Sadly, Stevens, Burke and Burke, and Patricia Langelotti, defendants at police. And uh, it's on appeal from the Harrison Town Court, John M. Vulch. And it's uh, a notice of motion. extend to enlarge the time to serve and file a reply brief and not to be ensnared by the error of the Harrison court clerks who misread this action as two actions when it is only one action and here's the caption as Glendora wrote it, and I just read that to you. Please take notice that upon the annexed affidavit of Glendora, uh, dated uh, Patriot's Day, the 18th uh, day of April, 2006, Anno Domini, that plaintiff appellant will move this court and a term thereof to be held at the courthouse of the appellate term of the Supreme Court, 9th and 10th Judicial Districts, at 141 Livingston Street, 15th floor, Brooklyn, New York, uh, 11201, on the fourth day of May, 2006, at uh, 10 o'clock in the forenoon of that day, or soon thereafter, as can be heard, for an order enlarging the time to serve and file a reply view and to consolidate uh, 2005-1941 and 2005-1942 into one action as filed by Glendora before the uh, Harrison clerks aired in thinking it was two actions. Uh, dated April 18, 2006, County of Columbia, State of New York. Yours in truth and an amor patriae and an amor New Yorkai, love of one's country and love of New York. And without prejudice, uh, Uniform Commercial Code, Article 1207, Glendora. And it's to Robert M. Kelly, Sadly Stevens, Burke and Burke at 230 Burke Avenue, uh, Park Avenue, 
New York, New York, 10169. Callaghy is not the attorney on this case. He is a defendant and cannot defend co-defendants. He is an appellee and cannot defend co-appellees. We don't have any aerosol in the sky, folks. Our sky is blue. There is some aerosol over there on the east horizon. Now, here is the affidavit in support of the motion to uh, enlarge time to serve and file a uh, reply brief and to uh, consolidate the cases. Now, this is an amazing thing. Alpha, under penalty of perjury, Glendora professes, avouches, avows, attests, and declares that she is telling the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help her God. Why this is an affidavit. Robert M. Callaghy is not the attorney on this case. He is a defendant and an appellee. As a defendant, he cannot defend co-defendants, and as an appellee, he cannot defend co-appellees. You see his name in the caption, and that of his law firm, Sadly Stevens Burt Burt. They are both defendants, appellees. Data on March the 16, 2006, uh, Marilyn Judah allegedly. Uh, male Glendora plaintiff appellant the following uh, affidavit or uh, certificate of service not an affidavit look what she does okay she says that on March 16th she served this on Glendora it's very important for you to see that March 16th right there right there now look she said she served it on March the 16th under penalty of perjury. But here's the last page of Callaghy's brief, and it's March the 17th. Oh, 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 oh. Now, page five. This is perjury. Judah committed perjury, and Callaghy lies. Or maybe they both committed perjury. Appellate term gives seven days to submit a reply brief. In this perjury is seven days, March the 23rd or March the 24th. If it was served on March the 16th, seven days is going to be either March the 23rd or March the 24th. Guess what? I never received the brief until March the 25th. The appellate term uh, wants it answered in seven days and that's seven, March the 23rd or March the 24th, and I didn't receive it until March the 25th. And uh, here is my uh, proof of that. And there's the day I received it, 225. Delta. Nevertheless, Glendora labored arduously and zealously refuting Callaghy's 60 lies. It took 15 hours plus four hours to read it on TV and hence to the internet. She did it as fast as she could. It cost $32.20 to print and post it. It took uh, 60 pages to refute Callaghy's 60 lies by sending it overnight express at a cost of circa $15. Isn't that a lot to pay for a letter? $15? A lot of money for her. Glendora put it to the clerk of the appellate term, got it to the clerk of the appellate term by March the 31st, six days after receiving it. Glendora acted in 100% good faith. Epsilon, because Callaghy is a co-defendant and a co-appellee, he is appearing only for himself. He is a lawyer who is a pro se. He cannot defend co-defendants and he cannot defend co-appellees. So his brief is a nullity as to all the other defendants' appellees. The same have not appeared. So the next huge defect is that Callaghy's introducing a non-defendant, a non-appellee. 
Callaghan's brief said this on the front page. Well, CVSC Holdings Incorporated. I don't know what that is. I never sued CSC Holdings Incorporated. I don't know what it is, and I don't care what it is. I sued Cablevision Systems Corporation. Callaghy has ruined his paper by introducing a non-defendant appellee. CSC Holdings Incorporated is not an appellee. It's not a defendant. Zeta. Glendora did not sue Sadly Stevens Burke and Burke LLP. Glendora sued Sadly Stevens Burke Burke, period. This is more dishonest and dishonorable representation by Callaghan. And Deborah Eacock, which he included in the, uh, whom he included in the uh, caption, uh, lives in Putnam and was taken out of the caption by the Harrison Westchester Court. Callaghan knows that, and yet uh, he misrepresents. Ada, there is another lawyer in this case. His name is David Singer. And he's at 411 Theodore Froim, Froim Frem Avenue in Rye, and Callaghy did not serve him a brief, nor did Callaghy serve each of his co-defendants, co appellees not represented by lawyers. Charles Dolan, Cablevision, James Dolan, Udell, Garga, Forma, Saverino, Masterville, Anderson, Sadler, Stevens, Burke, and Burke. And Callaghy did not serve all parties, and Glendora is serving all parties. Theta, we're up to page 10. Callaghy's 70 lies, cheats, misrepresentations, and material facts are in abominable violation to New York analog to Federal Rules of Civil Procedure Rule 11, and he should be sanctioned, and also in violation of the criminal Title 18 United States Code Section 1001, 1001. We're on the last page. Paragraph 22 is reserved. Conclusion. For all of the reasons stated herein, please grant Glendora's motion to enlarge the time to serve and file her reply brief and to reconsider, reconsolidate her case, which the Harrison clerks mistakenly bifurcated and even confused the judge, together with any further relief just and proper. And that's dated today. And it's notarized uh, by Bonnie Sullen. And this paper, folks, is Opus, it's legal paper, 1,381. 10 hours, $26.66 to print and post. Internet number is uh, 4,319-13 circa. Well, now let me think. Well, shall I pick up those? Uh, I'm going to the post office now and send this down to a friend in White Plains who's going to serve it on all of these... Uh, defendant called Appleys. So, those were pretty nifty words that I was telling you. What were they? Alternative, alpine, staining to the belly. Like, uh, you could, dot com is an alpine cat. She sleeps on the belly, on my belly. Uh, and then comes a main, which means full speed ahead, and uh, amanuensis, which is what these law clerks are to these judges, doing their thinking for them and their writing for them. And uh, amalgamate, that's good, uh, to unite into a, or to combine into a unified whole. That's what you want to be with God, one with God. And uh, amateur is uh, somebody who pursues uh, 
a, an interest just because he likes to and wants to. And uh, Amazon, that's a war like masculine large woman of Virago and then is uh, Ambage which is roundabout uh, circuitous proceedings which is what Calligy is always doing evading the truth and uh, ambassador is a minister of high rank wouldn't you like to be an ambassador for God wouldn't you like to be an ambassador for God on high rank and go out and bring people to their happiness and bring them to the connection and bring them to joy and peace and richness and wealth and attainment and success and satisfaction and accomplishment? Wouldn't you like to be an ambassador of God, a minister of high rank? And uh, the last one is, let's see, that's number 220. And it's ambidextrous, which means equally skillful with both hands, neither left or right-handed, but ambidextrous. Okay, I will go to the uh, post office now and serve this, or send it to my friend to serve it. And why does Marilyn call her son Blister? He never shows up until the work is done. And does that little boy uh, and his dog go to school together? The way they have for years? No. Why not? No, not anymore. Well, how come? They were so cute together. They went to school together and they came home together. Why aren't they together anymore? Well, the dog graduated. At the retirement party, the boss said, Charlie always gave the company an honest day's work. Even if it took him a week and a half to do it. And Marilyn says about our boyfriend, Dad, He's the idol of his family. And Dad says, yes, he's idle most of the time. Now, folks, do I make you miserable and depressed? I can turn that all around. I can make you depressed and miserable. Betty says that she's a nature lover, in spite of what nature did to her. A man wanted to join Paranoids Anonymous, but they wouldn't tell him where they held their meetings. And Betty says, what do you think of red china? And Polly says, oh, it's okay if it doesn't clash with the tablecloth. And Lorraine gets her paycheck every week and the first thing she does is take it to the bank. And her, one of her fellow employees said, why do you take your paycheck to the bank? And she said, well, it's too little to go by itself. This is Glendora, cheerful look at life. Keep the courage flaming. I'll be back to see you soon. And I'm praying for you that you will make the connection to all of that happiness. Look at this, folks. The moon got up so late. Last night is going to be in the sky all day and we won't be able to see it. Pretty though, isn't it? Moon, the moon is coming up just as the birdies start to sing. And the sun's not far behind the moon. That's interesting. The sun will be coming up, or we will be rolling around to the sun. And the sun's right behind the moon. Folks, I'm praying for you. God is calling you. All that wealth, that happiness, that fulfillment, that beauty. God is calling you. Sit down and listen. How can you hear with all the cacophony around you? Television making all that noise. Radio. 
traffic, ambience in the stores. How can you hear? You've got to go where it's quiet. You've got to go where you're alone with the greatest there there is. All the power, the Almighty, power over all, unlimited might, omnipotence, it's all yours, free! And here you go around paying for this noise. You pay for this noise to keep you away from your greatness and your beauty and your success and your fulfillment. How can you hear with all this cacophony around you? Turn it off. Go by yourself alone, first thing every morning, and hear the peace, the joy, the satisfaction, the happiness, the attainment, all the things that you can bring to an issue of full success. Cut out the cacophony and hear the answers and have a happiness and hear this message Isaiah 1 where is it Isaiah? yeah it's Isaiah 1 11 God's holy mountain and the lion shall lie down with the lamb and there shall be no more cruelty to animals. And animals won't be cruel either. Stop the cruelty. My neighbor, Mary, invited me very, very kindly to this lecture. It's five dollars. And it's the John Birch Society and something else here. The American Opinion Education Committee. To hear this man because he's a investigative reporter and uh, the New American, that's a newspaper that gives you the news that you don't get in the major media like the New York Times and on TV because they are all bought by the international bankers. How is the war on terror? This is certainly true. Oh, where is it? How is the war on terror being utilized uh, to deny American citizens? Ooh, that's, there. Ooh, that's bad. That should be T-H-E-I-R, Constitutional Liberties. Oh, you wouldn't think educated people like that can make such an error. Well, uh, come and learn how you can preserve our nation's independence and your own personal freedom. This is all about the globalists who want to subordinate the United States to uh, being a part of one world government. Here, here, this apparently is a fading American flag. There's a good American flag. And look at the moon still up there. Can we see it? Yep. Isn't that amazing? Well, anyway, it has its value. And It has its place, and it has its list on the priority. But I said to my dear neighbor, thank you so much for your two invitations. Also, she invited me to a concert, music concert across the river in Catskill. Uh, your thinking of your neighbor is appreciated. but. The realization is clearer and clearer that the answer is not driving around here and there and listening to lectures and concerts and TV and radio and the ambience in the stores and traffic. The answers we seek are in quiet with pen and notebook, hearing what God is trying to tell us. Five hours spent there really 
does the world the most good. What do you want us to do, God? What is the special list of talents you have given each of us? What bad habits do you want accomplished? Or the erasing of what bad habits do you want accomplished? How can we keep our thought, speech, emotion pure? Into Alia. With thanks, Vesta. Let me make that correction. I made one too. Americans for legal reform be sure to vote but not for lawyers uh, Julie Gambino for information Wednesday's meetings are Wednesday's but just two more and then they go out and they pick up the uh, Supreme Court in Nassau County in Woodbury and in Suffolk the uh, last meeting apparently until fall is May 10th and then they go pick it up at Supreme Court and they talk about bad judges and bad lawyers and they keep a watch on lawyers and whoa, where do they meet the Plainview Old Bethpage Library and here are some of the people they want some information on. So oh, here again is the person to call. Now let's go on to some more jelly beans. This is from my niece in Utica, a nurse, an RN.
Jim Gilmore, how are you coming on your vacuuming? Thank you, Jim Gilmore and Mrs. Gilmore, for all of the time you gave to the food pantry in Valencia and feeding the hungry people. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All those years. Thank you. A lifetime. Unified court system, state of New York. Quality Service Division, Office of Court Administration, Alfred E. Smith Office, Building in Albany. Well, they want a, an evaluation here. Get rid of all those magnomet magnetometers or whatever they are. Get rid of all this frisking. Get rid of all these beeps and whistles and buzzers. And get rid of all those New York State court officers that are costing us so much money. And then you come back and you increase the taxes here and you increase the fees. And you take away $55 for every traffic ticket and all of this stuff about a car, registering a car and inspection it, it is just nothing but a RICO. And all these unnecessary troopers going up and down the Taconic, and instead of there to protect us, they're just there to wring the money out of us. I've had enough of it. Get rid of all your expenses and all your revenue and all and putting the money in your pocket and ripping us off. And get rid of these court officers in the uh, lobbies of the courtroom. You know, going through our pocketbooks, going through everything that we bring in, taking away our voice recorders, taking away our video recorders. Get rid of it all and get rid of the expense of it. That's what I think of your quality service, unified court system and everything else in the state of New York that is out there to extract as much money as they can from us gasoline tax, the telephone taxes. Get rid of it. You make us do things that we don't want to do. You see these coins, folks? Every time Glendora has a bad thought, she puts a coin in this jar. And then, on Sunday she takes it to church and puts it on the altar. What's a bad thought? Negative, second level, trivial, ugly. We can do better than that. We can use our thought, which is huge power for things better. So we'll drop this note into the jar this Sunday so that the people taking the offering can see what it is. The good news is that God has a great big box of gifts for you. Sitting under the Christmas tree and you didn't pick them up. They've been there since December 25th. That's the good news. All the things that are in that box for you. Ooh, happiness, peace, quiet, rest, joy, Money, houses, cars, success at work, accomplishment, attainment. That's the good news. God has a big box full of ecstasies for you. What's the bad news? You're too dumb to go get it. You don't look in the right places. You don't take the right path. You find excuses. Your mind is filled with bad thoughts. You don't give praises and thanks and appreciations and joys and you don't rejoice. That's the bad news. And it's there all the time. How do I know? Well, I spent my alone time with God every morning. And God told me that he had this box for you. That there was this big box of great presents for you. Do you want it? Do you know the secret yet? Do you want me to tell you? Or do you want to stay tuned?
Well, folks, take a look at it. It's third legal paper this week. However, this legal paper has taken six months. It started in November. And it is Omnibus 28. And wait till you see the people who are sued in it. Wait till you see. It is to be served today, April the 20th, 2006. Thursday, Arnold Domini. The first one goes to the clerk of the court. For the United States District Court, the District of the U.S. Virgin Islands. And into that goes $250? No. For some reason, $50. And what you just saw is only volume one, or book one, really. Actually, there's nine volumes, and uh, this is book two of it. That's to the clerk. Uh, these two books, totaling nine volumes, go to the United States District Judge in the United States District Court, District of U.S. Virgin Islands. This is what you call a courtesy copy to the judge, his own copy. He doesn't have to depend on the clerks. These are copies to eight friends, eight people who love the United States and are fighting. It's being ruined. And these brave hearts are Arnie Erngen, Edward Whitney, Albert Lebrun, Mary and Dorothy Kennett, George McDermott, Brad Sachs, a friend, Elena Sasshauer, Center for Judicial Accountability, Dr. David L. Cuddy. These people are all over the globe, aren't they? North Carolina, Washington, D.C. And this monolithic group of 22, these are going to the defendants. Robert E. Gerber, bankruptcy judge, uh, district of, first, Southern District of New York. Guido Calabresi, John Walker, Roseanne McKechnie, and Patricia Chin Allen, people who are defying and defiling and deforming the United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit, Manhattan. Cecilia Masterilli and Cablevision Systems Corporation. Sadly, Stevens, Burke and Burke, Robert M. Callagy, Walter A. Sawrock, liar for hire for Cablevision. But in this case, it's doubtful that they are being paid by Cablevision. They're paying for it themselves, is the speculation. William E. Smith, a circuit judge, no, a yeah, district judge in Providence, Rhode Island. What good can you ever expect from the Providence, Rhode Island federal court? Uh, Celia. Lippis, Jimenez, Stearns, Tourella, Gary Went, Florence Pagano, all enemies of the United States in the United States Court of Appeals for the First Circuit, Boston. They're all being sued. These are defendants. There are 22 defendants. Again, Sally Stevens, Burke and Burke, Walter Sawrock, and Robert Callagy, liar for hire, cable vision, question mark. Buzzard Frere, and Michael A. David Wall, and John C. Adams. The Council on Foreign Relations, and Richard Huss, its president. All people trying to subordinate the United States to a world government. The Trilateral Commission and Thomas J. Foley and David Rockefeller. 
These are the international bankers. Elliot Spitzer and Richard Rifkin and James B. Henley and Lisa Gardy. Mel Feasers. New York State. Attorney General's Office. Defendant. Again, James Reynolds, Stuart Smith, Rob Johnson, Laurie Pulver, Mid-Hudson Cablevision, and Mid-Hudson Media. And we tell them this is a new lawsuit against you. You have been sued again for refusing legal papers into Alia. Warburg Pincus and Lionel J. Pincus, international bankers. Rothschild, North America, and Raymond W. Smith and Gerald Rosenfeld. These are the people with the money and with the power, and they're trying to make the United States part of a world government. Goldman Sachs and Company, and Henry M. Paulson. Again, these people are the ones who enslave us to the Federal Reserve System, which is also a defendant, and Alan Greenspan. Defendant. The World Bank and James G. Wolfenson and Paul Wolfowitz. They make depressions, they make good times, they make wars. They're behind this war in Iraq. Lehman Brothers and Richard S. Fold. The Rockefeller Financial Services and David Rockefeller. Robert A. Shemansky and Denise L. Scher in the Hempstead Court, District Court, now State District Court, not Federal, in uh, Nassau County, refusing to file a petition. Arthur D. Spad and Jeffrey Amato, who violated abominably our public access rights in Bernas versus Cablevision. Last defendant, number 22, is Michael Young and Jack A. Nussbaum and Wookie Farr and Gallagher, who are the lawyers for bankrupt Adelphia and who are, cannot get the work done and who make wrong moves and are burning up the creditors estate and they're getting the money instead of the creditors and this is Glendora's copy uh, this is volume one. Oh boy so heavy it's so ponderous uh, volume two falls volume three and a another partial set that will not be served or submitted. And this is what I'm going to read you. This We are on the 82nd hour right now of this lawsuit on the bus 28. And so you better turn the dial unless you're interested in the welfare of your country. Unless you're interested in having a United States. This is the log. And the log is already 114 pages. When you write a lawsuit, the first thing you do is to make a log and tell when it was received. And then you work on it 15 minutes a day. And you tell what you did in that 15 minutes a day. And then the next thing you do is get out the file and review it whenever you write a legal paper. Okay. So this next 15 minutes is going to be reading you the caption and then reading you the complaint against these traitors to the United States of America. Well, folks, here we start on a beautiful April day. Now, if your cable company carries a cat with Lindor for only a half an hour, it's too bad. You lose some continuity, but at the same time, you gain a lot. However, that means you can find the whole thing on the internet. 
It'll probably take four or five programs, four or five half hours. Self-addressed stamped envelope, enclosed to the clerk to send you a receipt for your $50. Most, I never heard of a federal lawsuit charging only $50 to file, but that's what the man said in the Virgin Islands. And this is what it looks like. It's a verified complaint, a jury trial is demanded, and it's omnibus 28. I don't have to read you the defendants, because we just did that in showing you the envelopes. So, I want to read you the preliminary statement. The defendants take up five pages. This action is a legal proceeding by which Glendora enforces and demands her rights in a court of law. Make it that clear, folks. Make it that clear that you are enforcing your rights in a court of law. This is America. Are you a court of law? Or are you just another washed out puppet of the international bankers smothering the U.S. Constitution by a monster called the Uniform Commercial Code. Federal Rules of Civil Procedure 4D. All defendants have been served. This complaint, pursuant to Federal Rules of Civil Procedure 4D. See the last six pages of this complaint. This is a verified complaint. Under penalty of perjury, Glendora severates. She is telling the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help her God. Defendants have not or have covered up the truth by secrecy or autism. For this, defendants are having being sued. First went to the Criminal Code, 18, United States Code, Section 1001. This is a Rule 8, Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. Notice complaint. This court has subject matter jurisdiction because of federal question and or diversity of citizenship. This court has venue because this is a civil rights action and a civil rights action can be brought in any federal court in the United States. And because Title 28, the United States Code, Section 1404 states, venue has to be in the interest of justice. In the interest of justice. And that is the controlling phrase. Remember, Glendora has a constitutional right to be pro se. Further, it is a statutory right, Title 28, the United States Code, Section 1654. If you have a problem with this, actuate Title 28, U.S. Code, Section 144 and Section 355, recuse. A main pro se civil rights actions cannot be dismissed until the plaintiff has the opportunity to prove beyond a doubt. All of her claims. And that comes from Glendora versus Cablevision in 1995. A victory over Cablevision who took Glendora's show off of the TV because of not liking the truths that she was telling. And it's also in Branham versus Clark and Cap Cities versus something else and somebody versus something else. A civil rights pro se action cannot be dismissed until the plaintiff has an opportunity to prove her case. Now promiscuously Defendants violated the Criminal Code, 18 U.S. Code, Section 1001, Misrepresentation of Material Fact. Glendora invokes 18 U.S. Code, Section 1961, et the Racketeer Influence Crime Organization Act, to give this court, which is a civil court, subject matter, jurisdiction over the Complaints herein that cite criminal statutes 
such as mail fraud, such as tampering with the evidence, inter alia. No magistrate, no magistrate is to touch Glendora's action in any way without her consent in writing. This happens to be the law, Title 28, United States Code, Section 636. No clerks. Glendora has a constitutional right to an Article III judge, which is a United States District Judge, a United States Circuit Judge, or a United States Supreme Court Judge. Glendora has a constitutional right to an Article III judge. She insists that a United States judge read her complaint, decide her complaint, and sign every paper. This complaint is to be adjudicated, decided, determined, and pronounced judicially, and only judicially. This court must adhere to Article III. Glendora will suffer no more of this synthetic, artificial, and addled hoop jumping by kid law clerks with acuminate heads, and on this Glendora is adamant. If this court does not give Glendora justice, if this court robs her of due process of law, if this court does any of this sua sponte stuff, emptiness, Glendora wants her money back. This inflated $250 on no basis comes out of Social Security, and this court has a job to do. I'm saying $250 because I can't believe that a U.S. court is charging only $50. So I'm saying $250. Protect America is your job. Enforce the statutes, the U.S. Code, and the U.S. Constitution, and you get $150,000 a year and to achieve the same. Find a claim and a claim against your bond to uphold the Constitution can be made. George McDermott has already started that, how to file a claim against a judge's bond. And the bonding company realizes that the judge is a bad risk and he doesn't, the bonding company doesn't bond the judge anymore so the judge can't be on the bench. By law, the case must be litigated by the plaintiff and the defendants. You are not to act as their defense attorney. They have to answer. If they do not, Glendora gets judgment by default pursuant to Rule 55, Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, and you are not to answer for them. This controlling phrase in all venue laws, 28 U.S. Code, uh, now, section et sequitur, is again in the interest of justice. Congress said what it meant and meant what it said. By common law, your job is simply to ensure that the rights of both sides are protected. And when you cease to do the same, you lose jurisdiction. Even with the multiple layers of self-interest, I'm talking to the judge, the federal judge in the Virgin Islands. Even with the multiple layers of self-interest and the scars taken by your soul to get this job, you can intercept that this is right for America. Glendora is fully aware of how much the international bankers have affluently provided to denude the United States courts to nothing. They have succeeded. They do not want the people to have rights nor justice. <clears throat> Glendora binds charges and challenges solemnly as if under an oath or perhaps under a curse. She solemnly, she entreats earnestly. Federal judges should excite wonder, united with approbation, deserving of the highest esteem. Paragraph 27 is reserved. This was dated February the 14th, 2006, Partnership Day, State of New York. The day I became partners with God two years ago. Valentine's Day it was. Yours in truth and in amor patriae, love of one's country, and in Amor, New York, I love of the state of New York, Glendora, without prejudice, uniform, commercial code, Article 1, 207, and this is Glendora, chat with Glendora on 52 TV stations, 520 municipalities, including Albany, New York, and Washington.
This is installment two. Uh, Gwendor has sued the ten dirtiest international bankers. And on the program just before this, a half hour program, we read the uh, names of the defendants and we read the preliminary statement telling the judge uh, not to cheat on this lawsuit. Uh, this lawsuit is being filed in the United States District Court uh, in the District of the United States Virgin Islands. And I'll give you the names of those international bankers and bad influencers on the United States government and on Congress and on George Bush and on the United States Supreme Court. They are Rothschild North America, Raymond W. Smith and Gerald Rosenfeld, Warburg Pincus, Lionel I. Pincus, Lazard Frere and Michael A. David Weil and John C. Adams. Uh, the Rockefeller Financial Services Incorporated and David Rockefeller Lehman Brothers and Richard S. Fold, Goldman Sachs and Company and Henry M. Paulson Jr., the Federal Reserve System and Alan Greenspan, the World Bank and James D. Wolfenson, and Paul Wolfowitz, the Council on Foreign Relations and Richard Haas, and the Trilateral Commission and Thomas S. Foley and David Rockefeller. And I'm reading you the first complaint which be about these ten defendants. Alpha. Defendants one through ten, Rothschild through the Trilateral Commission, want a one world government where they, the tiny few, are in absolute control and we, the massive masses, are enslaved. They are called the insiders, the globalists, the elitists, the controllers, the international bankers, inter alia. Whatever they are called, they have damage, plaintiff Glendora. Daily, these defendants sandpaper away the sovereignty of her country, the United States, and the recent CAFTA illustrates her claim. Open the borders to all and eliminate tariffs. In secrecy, they scheme and plot and connive to deprive us little people of rights and dollars, most conspicuously and most currently Regardez-vous the gasoline prices at two dollars and a half a gallon. They went as high as three dollars and a half a gallon and some of you have known them to go high as four dollars a gallon. They rob us of our blue sky and fill the atmosphere with chemtrails of poison exuded all day long from jet planes. The poisons such as ethylene dibromide linger in the sky for days and then drop to the earth and we have to breathe them. See www.carnicom.com C-A-R-N-I-C-O-M dot com We cannot sit out on our lawns anymore without looking above and seeing our an odious jet ominously wrecking our blue sky. They have succeeded in robbing us of courts places people used to go to get justice. But they do not want us to have justice. They do not want us to have rights. They have made fools out of the judges ad nauseum. And I have given you a documentary on that for 10 years. The foolish things that these judges sign or don't sign, which is against the law. They are behind the ridiculous flip-flops of the United States Supreme Court and are responsible for the attempted adulteration of the United States Constitution made impure by an admixture of foreign and base substances. Daily, they adumbrate its grandeur. Now we have federal judges paying juvenile ghostwriters to lie, rationalize, to abort decelerate human progress. 
they write the most ridiculous dictum, and rest assured, we'll take it ad valorem. They lie in broad daylight, with no compunction, as long as they do what the international bankers want them to do. Folks, you could not pay me for one minute to do what these people do. Sit there and violate the United States law and the Constitution all day long and get paid for it. The, Federalist, uh, the, Federal, the Fraudulent Bureau of Investigation, uh, the U.S. Department of Injustice, the United States Marshal Disservice, lie and cheat, fix and violate, Criminal Code, 18 U.S. Code, Section 1001. Promiscuously, because they know the international bankers, the money, the power, are behind them 100%. That's why the FBI does such ridiculous things. Now, isn't it sad? It is so sad. Adstitiously, they disamericanize. And the little courts follow the grime of their big brothers. The same filth infects the appellate courts, the federal and state appellate courts, the county courts, the municipal courts, down to the dirtiest town justice. And I have encountered many of those, and I have made a record of it for you on TV and on the internet. Adversely blows the wind. Contrary to Americanism, attachment and loyalty to the United States, its ideals, its interests, and its traditions. Every judge, every level is at an amic. They have lost their dynamics. They do not sign papers. They spit out papers unadjudged and unadjudicated. They do not deal with the case. They introduce causes that the plaintiff never intended, like Robert West. They lie that a civil rights case is a tort, so they can remove it from state court to federal court and protect their buddies. That's Title 28 U.S. Code Section 1447. Civil rights cases cannot be removed. So we can go ad infinitum about vicious lying of U.S. attorneys and New York State Assistant Attorney Generals. Glendora enumerated the lies of one U.S. attorney that totaled in excess of 4,000 in one case in one year. I have that. I have personal knowledge of that. Jesus the Christ was doing okay until he stood up to the money changers and turned their tables over. The money changers, the Khazars, K-H-A-Z-A-R-S. The next day, he was questioned. The day after that, they paid Judas Iscariot, a Seldoma, to betray him. The next day, he was tried. And the fifth day, he was crucified. Anno Domini. And that's just what we observed last week, Holy Week. This whole thing happened in Holy Week. Monday, Thursday is the Last Supper. And Judas went out and betrayed him. As heinous as their debauchery, and I'm talking about the international bankers and the courts, As heinous as their debauchery at the courts is their ruinization of the economy. The Jekyll Island group promised the congressman rushing home for the 1913 Christmas, Anno Domini, there would be no action on the Federal Reserve Act until, or the bill, until the congressman returned after Christ Mass, Christmas after the Christ Mass. But on December 23rd, the Jekylls passed the Federal Reserve Act. It was a cheat, a scam, a trick. Title 18, U.S. Code, Section 1001. 
Here in Glendora is damaged. It was a lie to her that the Federal Reserve System was, quote, federal, unquote. It is not. It took away from Glendora and her Congress their constitutional right to coin their own money. It gave this power to coin the money to the federal, quote, unquote, Reserve Bank. And the federal, quote, unquote, Reserve Bank was and is a private group of international bankers outside of our country, for the most part. We were swindled. Because they deceived, we were not to know who was on the board. And the bank was never to be audited. Can you imagine that? And, and they passed this while the congressmen were at home on Christmas vacation. We have been seriously damaged. We're up to page 18. So, the, quote, Federal Reserve System, unquote, prints money out of nothing, loans it to us, the United States, charges us interest. Now this is a scam artist's dream. So us, U.S., are in five trillion debt and enslaved to the international bankers. You realize what they did? They print money scarce or they print money affluently, thus causing the booms they want or the depressions they want thus causing the wars they want and the murder of mothers and fathers' sons, millions at a stroke. They deprive us of our property without due process of law, the Fifth Amendment. And when they created and now perpetuate the monster, the Federal Reserve System, they had to find a way to pay for it. That cheat is the Internal Revenue Act of 1913 also. Now it never did become a law. The Internal Revenue Bill is still a bill. It's not an act. It never did become a law because it was ratified by only three states. That's enough. We ought to stop right there. But here's what else we have against them. How were our civil rights violated? We keep a record of what comes in. This marriage has kept a record. For like 55 years. Of what comes in and what comes out. Each day. And at the end of the week folks. We call them the entries as postage, technical equipment, office supplies, printing, gasoline, inter alia. And at the end of the month, we put these totals on the year sheet. And at the end of the year, we put these totals on the lifetime sheet. And in our lifetime, since 1937 and through 2005, 101,752 dollars has been taken out of our paychecks. 101,752 dollars has been taken out of our paychecks, of which 98,849 dollars was the IRS. Not a law. This whole thing has been thievery. The IRS to finance the international banker scheme called the Federal Reserve System. Back in 1984, when interest was 15%, we used to buy a $10,000 T-bill for three months, every three months. We had 13 of them. We would buy one on Monday, and the interest on it would come on to th uh, Thursday, and the interest was about $350. The $10,000 for the key bill that we bought 13 weeks ago would come in on Saturday. So on Monday, 
we would take that $10,000 key bill that came in on Saturday and go up to the bank and we would buy another $10,000 three month key bill. They took that away from us. The interest was 15% and it went down a few months ago to under 1%. Now I think it's around 2 to 3 percent. When I was in high school, it was 6 percent. This is how they manipulate us. Because they took away from us our right to print our own money. One Monday, an inexperienced teller made out a check for $10,000 to the Federal Reverse Bank. For our whole country, that was a Freudian slip. And how right the little darling was. Now, look at what the international bankers did to that 15% interest. It is less than 1%. They took it away from us and stuffed their pockets. That's all what it's about. I shouldn't think they even bother wanting money anymore. And that explains their drive for power. They've got all the money, most of the money. Now it's the drive for power. Their avarice is never satisfied and they are never happy. In two minutes, we're going to rejoice about something. Every 15 minutes, we rejoice about something. And I've got a good one for you. Once, circa 1999, we went to our savings bank, the Bank of New York, and we asked to withdraw $130,000 cash. Don't you want a check? No, cash. The money had been in the bank for a long time. We had never touched it. We had never seen it. We had never smelled it. And we never counted it. It was all on paper. And they said, but it's dangerous to walk out of here with all that cash. We want cash. All 100s. At least you didn't ask for all pennies. Well, you just can't walk in here and demand all that money. Read the bylaws. Why? It is because they took the money that we deposited and they made tons loaning it to somebody else and then additionally sold loans for which they had no cash revenues. And fractional reserve banking rears its ugly head. It took this bank three days to find $130,000 cash. And we took it home and we counted it for a few days. And we looked at it and we smelled it and we felt it. And then we took it back to the scoundrels. $130,000 or so is not that much money. But you can see on what a slim margin these acquisitors operate or force the little branks to operate upon. This all comes from the Federal Reserve Bank, the Federal Reserve System, the money changers, the international bankers who are being sued in this lawsuit. Here's our rejoice. Every 15 minutes, folks, rejoice about something. This is our Father's world. Oh, let me ne'er forget that though the wrong seems oft so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is our Father's world. Why should our hearts be sad? 
The Lord is King, let the heavens sing. God reigns, let the earth be glad. We are on page 21. What do you say we take a break? I want to go to the post office now and serve this Herculean lawsuit and make sure that it's on its way today. Okie doke. And then I'll come back and tell you the rest of it. Oh, on my way out the door, folks, to serve this lawsuit. Oh, little kitty. Look at the little kitty. You say hi to the people. Can the people see your face? Yeah. <laughs> Mary Ramage loves your face. On the way out the door, folks, as I started to say, I found the uh, preparation file for this lawsuit, and I wanted you to see how big that is. This is one, two, three, four volumes. It took 80, it's taken 82 hours already, this lawsuit. Is the morning use at nights like this? You can pull around. Oh, yeah. It is, huh? It's the afternoon that backs up. Although the last few afternoons have been really quiet. Which was surprising to everyone here since it was the final day for people to get their taxes out. Yeah, that's right. I was down at uh, Nancy's. Was at, it busy uh, there? No. Yeah, see and it was a day after income tax, too. We had, uh, Good Tanya meeting. and I both worked on that day, and uh, we were tripping over each other with nothing to do. <laughs> we were both here? Yeah, because we that thought ironic? it was going to be really busy. Isn't I mean, that ironic? Typical Mondays are terribly busy. Especially from four to five. I'll be. Maybe people realize that the IRS is that the inter, that the, there is no such thing as the Internal Revenue Act. It was never passed. It was only ratified by three states. It is not a law. Maybe people are catching on. Not paying their taxes. Well, they'll take you to court, but when they come right down to it, they can't find a law for it. Do you ever hear of Joe uh, Bannister? He was a federal, yeah, he was a, he was a gun-carrying IRS agent for 11 years. And a woman began to challenge him, where's the law for this? He couldn't find it. He went to his supervisors, where's the law for this? They couldn't find it. So he started a company telling people you don't have to pay income tax. So they arrested him, put him in jail, took him to court. And on the witness stand, his bosses were called. They couldn't find a law for him. And Joe Bannister went away free. Dr. Starkman. Very well. This little boy and his dog used to go to school together every day, go home in the morning, come back at night. He was very cute and they did it for years. Do you follow me? Mm -hmm. And so the woman says, well, do they do it anymore? And the other woman says, no. Well, why not? The dog graduated. <coughs> nice. What do you hear from Buffalo? Oh, not much, actually. Twenty-four ninety. I have a fan who calls me up from Buffalo, out in the, out near the great big church, you know, Our Lady of, what's that big church out there, South Buffalo? 
No, What's that sure. big church? There you do. Our Lady of Victory. I thank you. You're welcome. Don't forget your paper clip. <laughs> okay, I'm going to work on those other ones. This is in the wrong box. Okay, sorry about that. Uh -huh. Main which, Street, Galatia. That was, which one was it Since in? My, or since my early 98. Oh, okay. It's a post. <laughs> One dollars and four cents. Do you need any stamps? No, no. Whoopee! It is on its way to the Virgin Islands. It is served. bankers fifty dollars for a tank of gas. Does that make you happy? You happy people right now? Isn't that nice? You get all that money in your pocket. Okay international bankers we'll be right with you. Try to spend the next hour uh, videotaping this. We left on, on page 21. Uh, the tellers are so amiable and pleasant. All the banks, of course, are controlled by the Federal Reserve Bank. Yet behind the scenes, they are hammered to make sales. If they do not, they are exited. And how we are used and abused. Now, Glendora's account became overdrawn by $3. And the David Rockefeller Bank took $100 out of it as a fee. This was deprivation of property without due process of law. Glendora was never notified. Uh, and Glendora sued the David Rockefeller Bank in Providence Federal Court. The $100 was returned, and since Glendora has never written another check ever since, she buys money orders from the United States Postal Service and always knows whether the money is in the bank, in the account, or not. But one money order has the international bankers robbery on them and they're 95 cents a piece. It's too hot to videotape in the sun. Well, it's 64 to 70 degrees. Isn't that nice? And so since I'm dealing with shady characters I will videotape in the shade. Glendora told the bank she did not want withholding and she wrote it out in her own hand, signed it, and dated it. The bank took it out anyway. I told them I did not want withholding and they took it out anyway. Now this is the Fifth Amendment again. Deprivation of property without due process of law. Well, returning to uh, page 17 here in paragraph 18, Glendora averts it is not an anachronism to call the money changers who nailed Jesus to the cross international bankers. The barbarian Khazar hemoglobin is unbroken. Glendora blames the insiders for the sacrilege of 501c3 tax exempt churches. Churches cannot render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and under God what is God's. In New York State, churches are given. unguided 
engulfed by the New York State Business Corporation Law. Or not-for-profit corporation law. In keeping with their campaign of robbing people of courts and of justice, defendants are 1 to 10, want as many people in prison as they can. And what is their reason, folks? Well, their reason is, is that every person who goes to prison is bonded. They get a bond on every prisoner, and they sell the bonds back and forth, and they make piles of money on these. They make their billions on usury, and in the Old Testament, usury was forbidden. At times, since, since uh, some countries have outlawed it, but it is easy for them, these defendants, one to ten, to manipulate the legislators through their power and their money and into these Mephisto poisons. We are on page 23. Are these ten defendants state actors? Glendora says yes. Adsetitiously, they manipulate the state actors. Anybody who works for a government is a state actor. And since the U.S. government does anything they tell them to do, they run the government, ergo, they are state actors. It follows this night today. This is a civil rights action under Title 42 of the United States Code, 1983. Yeah, excuse me, 1982, and civil rights under uh, 1985. Collusion, conspiracy. And with the criminal violations of both, criminal code, that would be criminal code 18, United States Code 1001, uh, invoke to give this civil court jurisdiction over their criminal action. Uh, the government, actually it is the anti-government, works for the elitists, not for the people. The ten lead defendants herein are behind the slippery slope that the United States Supreme Court travels in making impure the United States Constitution with an, an admixture of foreign and baser substance. These circuit courts follow like ducks, the district courts after them, and the infection snowballs into the state appeals court, the county courts, and the municipals, city, town, and village courts. They have all been adulterated, and the globalists do not want people to have the protection of the courts and of their rights. They want tyranny and enslavement. Glendora has fought in the courts all levels for a very long time. She used to monitor judges for a reform group, the Fund for Modern Courts, out to reform judges, and wrote reports to the judges about the judges. Just a second, I'll be right back. I have to shut the trunk cover. This is the bread that my neighbor just made. I. I just can't describe to you the wonderful flavor. It's whole wheat, and that is really, really good bread. It's 72 degrees now, folks. Here, here's a dish of ice cream for you. This is soy milk ice cream, tofuti. No animal products, no animal fats, and delicious.
Uh, she has scrutinized the injustices for 11 years. At first, she concluded that it was simple buyout and sellout by the party chairman, federal, state, or municipal. Now she knows it's global. Now she knows who is really behind it. The lead defendants, one to 10. Only her selection of the 10 dirtiest international bankers with hundreds pyramided under them, like a delta, this is what they want, what they are easily able to finance. They will the total decay of Americanism, attachment to nations, interests and ideals. America is in their way. From Bush to the bottom, all the state actors are their puppets. Bush has no say, the bankers have the sway. Take a look at that gasoline this morning, $3.09 or 10 cents. The President of the United States is not elected by the people. The President is appointed by the United States Supreme Court. The Electoral College has no meaning. It does not even have a football team. Abstrusely, these defendants stuff the cabinets, administration after administration, with insiders to sway the country their way. The Trilateral Commission moves from Manhattan to Washington, D.C., where they can do it more odiously. They are not caring whether the president is a Republican or a Democrat as long as he or she is a CFR, Center for, or Council for Foreign Relations or Trilateral Commission. The profligate surrender to evil must cease every day it permits and it persists our civil rights, our constitution rights, our statutory rights are emasculated. The UN has become their tool. Their insidious evil robbed us again clandestinely of our gold in Fort Knox and FDR under their Influence terrorized my parents' generation out of their gold in 1933, abhorrently anti-constitutional. You either hand in your gold or you go to jail. 1933, 34, 35, along in there. Folks, I have to keep moving the table and the chair into the shade. What we should do, folks, is to make claims against their bonds. We should go to the bonding company and tell them that uh, this judge took an oath to support the Constitution of the United States and didn't do it. And so therefore, we want to make a claim against their bond and then the bonding company will find out that these judges are a bad risk. They won't want to bond them again, and then these judges can't come on the bench again. In Maine, my parents were doing all right, but when the 1929 crash, the money my parents had deposited in the bank was stolen. They went to the bank to get their money, and the banks were Uh, had absconded with the money. And the banks locked their doors and ran and hid, and my parents never got restitution. And the globalists 
got their money. It was no fun trying to find food and clothes in the state of Maine, 1929 to 1941, when FDR provoked the Japanese to bomb Pearl Harbor, to impel us into war, to pull the country and the economy out of its lethargy at the cost of millions of mothers' sons. Lindora marvels that her parents were able to keep four children alive during such poverty. Maine yellow eye beans every Saturday night, Sunday morning, Monday noon, and Wednesday night. While we were enslaved, the elitists live their cheater lives in luxury. And of course, they caused the Depression. But well, they're the ones who made it. Just as they caused wars, just as they caused depressions, just as they caused booms. Now I have something to show you. Ad infinitum, these defendants and their puppet government give shadowy and sketchy representations, indicate by vague disclosures and the truth is is still not known. Folks, we had to give up on uh, videotaping outside for the moment uh, because we ran out of uh, electricity. Uh, Glendora introduces a chart of uh, some key power, avarice, elite connections. Uh, this chart is uh, written by Dr. Cuddy, a PhD. And herein, he mentions all of the right people, Felix Robotten, or Rohatten, and uh, the CFR, and the trilateral. And he has their interconnections, and he has them very well delineated. It is something that you'll have to sit down and study if you like to. That's page one of it. And then there's page two and three. Lindora says she presents a list. It's partial, but it's elastic like their economy. Uh, money printing. Bankrupting the U.S., uh, improper influence, 
perpetuating the evils of the Federal Reserve System, illegal IRS income tax. It's not a law. It was uh, ratified by only three states, and I think it requires three quarters. So it's not a law. Uh, robbing us of uh, gold and silver, murdering justice in the courts, building a police state to smother the republic, uh, murdering the United States Constitution, murdering the state constitutions, robbing us of our blue sky with poisons in the sky, bands of aerosol, ethylene dibromide, ruining good weather, clouds, and all day instead of sunshine, covering up our moon and planets at night, all the starry band of shining worlds in splendor through the sky. Our grateful song before thy throne arise, God of our Father, whose almighty hand leads forth in beauty all the starry band of shining worlds in splendor through the sky. Our grateful song before thy throne arise. And that's what they're ruining. They're covering that up at night. And bulging prisoners, bulging prisons because of innocent people, selling bonds on them. Enormous costs of building and operating prisons. These are all blamed on the international bankers, the globalists, the elites, the controllers, the one-worlders. Adulteration of the Department of Injustice, the Fraudulent Bureau of Investigation, and the U.S. Marshal Disservice at all. Selling the sovereignty of the United States. Accelerating one world, accelerating one world to the receding of the populace. Crimes against the people. Panics, depressions, wars, and into Alia. You know, the daughter says, Mother, I don't want to get married. And her mother says, you have to get married. Every woman has to have a husband. There are just some things that you can't blame on the government. With their secret societies, they are trying to steal the United States away from us. They are trying to make one world where they own everything and we own nothing. Now they are trying to steal from us public access. And Clinton is trying to censor the Internet. Paragraph 77 is reserved. Follow herein the fraud and felonies for which defendants rushed out through trilateral commission are sued. I'll read to you fraud first. Fraud is an intentional Persian perversion of the truth. And that's what our government is doing to us all the time. It's not the government, folks. It's the anti-government. For the purpose of inducing another in giving up something of valuable to him or to surrender a right or a false representation of a matter of fact, whether by words or by conduct, this is fraud. By false or misleading allegations, concealment of that which should have been disclosed, which deceives and is intended to deceive. 
another so that he shall act upon it to his legal injury. Now that's part of what fraud is. And so first I charge them with fraud, particularly the Federal Reserve System. And Glenn Doerr, an all-American citizen, has an unqualified right to meaningful access to the courts. The action cited herein precluded the lawful reward of the courts and denied her due process of law and our felonies under the criminal code, Title 18, United States Code. Glendora pleads relief from this painful state and restitution. See her wherefore, therefore, and ergo. Alleviation. Now here's the law. Whoever commits an offense against the United States or aids, abets, counsels, commands, induces, or procures and this is all of these ten defendants, all of these international bankers. Its commission is punishable as a principal. And that's criminal 18 U.S. Code, Section 2. Criminal 18 U.S. Code, Section 241, conspiracy against the rights of citizens. 18 U.S. Code, Section 371, conspiracy to commit an offense or to defraud the United States. Criminal Code, 18 U.S. Code, section, section 401, parenthesis 2. Misbehavior of oh. court officers in their officers' transactions. Criminal Code, 18 U.S. Code, section 1001, 1001, lying and covering up. Defendants' acts, policies, and practices violated plaintiff's rights under the United States Constitution together with her public access rights under 47 U.S. Code, Section 521, 19 New York Code, Rules and Regulations, Regulations 595.4, Municipal Franchise. Glendora invokes the RICO. Racketeer Influence Crime Organization, 18 U.S. Code, Section 1964 to give this court jurisdiction over the defendant's criminal acts. This is the end of the Alpha defendants. 1 to 10, Rothschild through the Trilateral Commission. Now advance to the Beta defendants. How are you doing? Isn't it something? With all that beautiful sunlight out there, it was too dark in the shade to videotape and too hot in the sun to videotape. So we're back in the house with artificial light. So folks, we had a little rest, did you? Uh, this is Beta, Beta Defendants. Uh, Spitzer, who was the Attorney General for the State of New York, an assistant named Rifkin, and an assistant named Henley and uh, an assistant U.S., I mean, uh, New York State Attorney General named Gardy. Uh, they seek unmerited preferment. Here before your very eyes, right in broad daylight and in their own hand, these 32 pages of documents uh, tell their civil rights violations against Plaintiff Glendora. Res ipsa locator, things speak for themselves, as the Romans used to say. Uh, follow here in are the fraud and felony for which they are sued. Now that paper was about 40 pages long when it came in from Gardy. It was a terrible mess uh, in the United States District Court in Idaho. Uh, I refuted it phrase by phrase. I read it to you and eventually they got sued. And they got sued for fraud and they got sued for 18 U.S. Code, Section 2, for committing an offense against the United States, and uh, Criminal Code 18241, Conspiracy Against the Rights of Citizens, Criminal Code, U.S. Code uh, 371, Conspiracy uh, to commit offense 
or to defraud the United States and 18 U.S. Code Section 4012, uh, misbehavior of court officers in their official transactions, and 18 U.S. Code Section 1001, and you know what that is by now, lying, cheating, misrepresenting. And again, Glendora includes the RICO, the Racketeer Influence Crime Organization Act, to deal with their criminal offenses, because after all, this is going into a civil court. So those papers, that paper is reproduced in the complaint, and it was 30 pages. So we have done volume one, the complaint up through the New York State Attorney General. Uh, Gamma, defendants uh, Sadly, Sarok, and Callagy are adversaries turned against Glendora with a design to oppose and defeat, but they never have the power, legal, intellectual, spiritual, physical, nor moral to succeed. Cecilia is there better. They know not the law. They lie. They have a meritorious defense. They ask the court for the same relief twice. They have no proof of facts. They never adduce. They produce no doctor's documents. They wallow in, again, 18 U.S. Code 1001, lying, cheating, and misrepresenting. They abuse the courts. They torment and process of honor to show cause. Uh, they lost to Glendora ten straight times in court. Then up against the wall, they pay the $5,020 into court on an appeal that is taken in bad faith and in fiduciary irresponsibility to the shareholders. They spend an estimated $20,000 to fight $5,000. Cecilia did not appear in court August the 24th, 2005. She defaulted, and Glendora was awarded $5,020. Uh, Cecilia defaulted another 30 days with Labor Day. Then appeared Sawrock, an intern at Park Avenue Law Firm, Saturday Stevens, Burke & Burke, with an order to show cause why the judgment should not be vacated. Sawrock had lied that he had a meritorious defense. Sawrock claimed White Plains had no jurisdiction over Cecilia because she was in Peekskill. Governor Pataki comes from Peekskill. Uh, Sawrock was ignorant of the rule that any small claims action can be brought in any of the city courts in Westchester County, no matter where it happened. It can be brought in Rye, or Peekskill, or Yonkers, or White Plains, or Mount Vernon. A post office box is not proper service for an order to show cause, nor did the service any of his papers additionally by regular mail. That's a law. It was obvious the order to show cause was a hoax to stay Glendora's collection of the $5,000, nor did he put up the required undertaking into the court to get a stay. Cecilia Sarak and Sadly were promptly and intrinsically squashed. Uh, their motion was denied, and Sarak forgot to enclose the affidavits and, meritori and uh, memorandum of law with his order to show cause to Glendora. And Glendora answered what she could answer with what she had and sent it overnight mail. And then by overnight mail, uh, they saw that they didn't send the affidavits and the memorandum of law, so they hastily put it together. And so then I had to answer it again. And it was this repetitive, unnecessary uh, taxing of hours and dollars and ergs of energy. Yet I finally sued him again in white. Number 28, filed in the United States District Court. 
in the District of the United States Virgin Islands. And we've covered the first 10 defendants who are international bankers like Rothschild and Lazard Frere, Warburg Pincus. And we've covered the Attorney General of the State of New York. Uh, through Gardy and a couple of assistants lied and cheated and misrepresented. And it's quarter after three, or excuse me, two, and we always rejoice every 15 minutes. So we rejoice that the leaves are coming out. The brand new leaves are coming out. Now, we also sued Saturday Stevens, Burke and Burke for the misrepresentation, uh, rep misrepresentations and lying and cheating that they did. And uh, for the extra work that they caused Glendora and that they caused the White Plains City Court. Uh, these, I'm talking about Sally Stevens, Burke and Burke, Walter A. Sarrock, and uh, Cecilia Masterilli. Uh, these repetitious abuses of the court and of Glendora are actionable. It is obvious that these cheaters were only trying to dodge payment of the $5,020. The White Plains City Court denied their every motion. Glendora and the court were severely damaged by their fugitivism to dodge payment. And Glendora saw, sued them for damages that they caused her, $5,000, the monetary uh, maximum jurisdiction of a city court in the uh, state of New York. They had overworked the White Plains Court and Glendora asked for $5,000 sanctions to be paid into the court. That would be $10,000 altogether. Their motion to dismiss was flatly denied together with a scolding for overworking the New York State analog to Federal Rules of Civil Procedure 12B. They were ludicrous uh, claiming that Glendora stated no claim upon which relief could be granted. That's just an out and out lie. Uh, Glendora moved for a summary judgment instead of a trial since everything happened within the walls of the White Plains City Court. Therefore, the White Plains City Court is fully aware of the facts and circumstances as no other court ever has been. Glendora sues these defendants for fraud for violation of 47 U.S. Code Section 521 at SEC, that's the Cable Policy uh, Act of 1984, and for pendant state claims. And here again is what a fraud is. I'll just read you a sentence or two. A fraud is an intentional perversion of the truth for the purpose of inducing a person to give up something of value. And uh, or to cause a person to surrender a legal right or a false representation of a matter of fact and this is whether by words or by conduct and by false or misleading actions or the concealment of that which should have been disclosed, on and on. This is the law on fraud. I bet you people committed fraud against you. Sawrock, Saddley, and Callagy were supposed to have superior knowledge of the law, and they took advantage of a pro se, Glendora, and of the court, all for a miserable $5,020, which I haven't got yet. And of course, they're sued under 18 U.S. Code Criminal Code for lying and stealing. And the uh, proof of all this is in this paper that I read you some time ago, outlining all of their lies and a, a paper.